If you're somebody who's ever experienced feeling depleted of like all of your energy or, you know, depressed or just so physically ill that you were forced to take downtime for yourself, then this is for you because honestly, nobody is able to operate at 100% all the time. Just like anything else, like we're not able to function at full energy constantly. We all need to take downtime. We're all gonna get sick sometimes. A lot of people are gonna experience more bouts of low energy or depression or, you know, just needing to take that extra time for your mental health or your physical health than others. And it sucks whenever those times hit you off guard and you feel like, everything that you've been working for and all of the progress that you've been making in different areas of your life is now having to not only be put on hold, but potentially completely be derailed, right? And you end up quitting your goals. Well, that's what I wanna talk about today. I am no stranger to the roller coaster of energy, right? Like the productive highs followed by the complete depletion of energy and feeling super low. We do tend to kind of operate in seasons of productivity and seasons of energy and also the other side of that coin, you know, is seasons of low energy and depletion and just withdrawing and needing to take space and take downtime and rest. That's totally normal and you shouldn't have to sacrifice all of your other goals in order to take that time for yourself. And, you know, in the mindset of that and because I've known in the past over the years that I've had that kind of roller coaster of energy, I've had to create systems, you know, I love talking about systems that would keep me from losing all that progress. Now, if you take a look down in the description, I have my free planner guide. This is not something that I usually share, but it is something that I've used in the past for myself as a method of prepping and implementing the steps that I'm gonna be sharing with you today. So if you wanna have a spot to plan the steps that I'm gonna be sharing with you today, then be sure to grab your free downtime planner down in the description. I'd like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. And if you're new here, then hi, my name is Mia Danielle. I chat all about holistic and clutter-free living here on the channel. If that's something that you're into, be sure to click subscribe and turn on those notifications. I release new videos every Tuesday. Number one is to know yourself. So what do I mean by this? You have to know the person that you're planning for, essentially. And for me, that looks like planning, it looks like habit tracking, learning the times that I am gonna be generally more low energy versus higher energy. You can learn and gather so much information from habit tracking. It's not something that I'm actively doing regularly right now, but I've done a lot of it in the past and it's helped to you know build the foundation for the information that I have about myself today. In 2020, I got really deep into habit tracking and I tracked literally everything. Every time I went to the bathroom, every time I took a bath, every time I took out Charlie, like everything that I did that was a little bit excessive. I'm not saying you need to do that. But the amount of information that you can gather about yourself when you pay attention to your routines and rituals and moods and all of that is just insane. You'll find that you have patterns that you never realized that you had. Sometimes it might be related to times of the month. Sometimes it might be related to seasons and times of the year where you just have this regular energy dip. That's what we're looking for in this case, energy dip or energy energy peaks, on the other hand, um, that you can plan around. Because when you have that information, you can plan for that time. You can really lean into the time periods when you know you're gonna have a lot of energy, when you know you're gonna have a lot of space and be super productive. So step one is really all about information gathering. <laughs> I'm all about, you know, like awareness first, finding out where you are first, gathering the details, and then formulating a plan and taking action based on that. If you're into creative projects like bullet journaling, I've done that before. A lot of people love to track their own habits on bullet journals because you can get really specific with it. You can make whatever kind of visual graph you like, whatever suits you. And so that's definitely one thing, but it is probably the most time consuming method to go about it. So if you're not somebody who's very artistic or you don't have a lot of time to invest in something like that, you're probably gonna wanna go the app route in the past I've used apps like daily.io, Habitify, 
clue. There are tons out there. If you just type in habit tracker on your phone or wherever your app store is, you'll find tons and you can just find the interface that seems to work best for you. Or if you're like, no Mia, I will never be a habit tracking kind of person. That's fine too. There are definitely other ways that you can base this information on. Like for example, I've shared before that I'm a huge introvert. So I know that if there are periods of planned high visibility, high social interaction for me, like if I'm doing a big promotion or if I'm going to a big social event, I know that there's a good chance that I'm gonna need at least a week or two of downtime after that, just based on what I know about myself. So you can also just base this off of general information about yourself and how your energy tends to work. Or if you're somebody who lives in like a rainy climate or a climate that's overcast for half the year, like I am here in the Pacific Northwest, you might experience seasonal affective disorder where you get depressed in the darker seasons of the year. And usually those are really predictable because they tend to start and end at the same time each year. This is essentially a data gathering phase. Any effective plan starts with strong data. Number two is time blocking, which is closely related to batching. Batching and time blocking kind of go hand in hand. They work really well together. They're not exactly the same thing though. Time blocking essentially is telling your time where to go. You've heard the saying like, we all have the same 24 hours in a day and you're responsible for delegating where that time's gonna go to an extent, right? Like we all have things that are outside of our scheduling control. Like we have jobs with various deadlines. Our kids have school projects and events that are outside of our control, but we can do our part to efficiently schedule what we're able to. So try to find blocks of time where you have been shown to have the best energy and put your creative projects or your social events in those blocks of time. You know, just be smart about your scheduling. I've already shared what schedulers I use and how I do all of my project batching in this video on batching. So I'll just leave that there for any further details. But essentially this is about using the information that you gathered in step one. Then, and this is important, schedule time for rest. It is important that you actually schedule time for rest in the same way that you would schedule time for creative projects or for social events or for a job deadline. Because if you don't schedule it, you're probably not going to take it. And that's what ends up resulting in burnout and this full energy depletion in the first place is not valuing and prioritizing that time of rest. I think that a lot of time people get some downtime because it's forced upon them, but then they feel guilty the whole time because it wasn't really planned or prepared for. And if you can do the best that you can to try to prepare for that, it makes you enjoy and really just feel replenished with that downtime that you're taking. So you can sleep in and make quick meals and be totally lazy because that's what you're scheduled to do. Next up is to be honest, starting with yourself. Is there an area of your life that you're out of alignment in that's leading you to feel drained or depleted in energy? Because sometimes, you know, fixing those alignment issues can solve the problem altogether or it can give you more information that you need in order to take down time. Are you feeling drained all the time because you're deeply unhappy in an area of your life? So maybe you're in an unhealthy relationship or are at a job that you hate, you know? A lot of times taking the time to just be honest with yourself and do a little bit of a check-in and self-evaluation can help you to fix the problem of feeling drained and low energy altogether. And it can definitely make your downtime more enjoyable when you know that you are recharging to get back to something that you're in alignment with. And then be honest with other people, the right people. You don't need to just blurt out your problems or your feelings to everybody. So while I'm not saying that it's a good idea to tell your boss that you hate your job unless you're planning on exiting that job. It could be a good idea to let your partner and your co-workers, your significant other, know that you're going through a little bit of a slump or energy depletion and that you're just needing to take a little bit of downtime to recharge. You know, people are much more likely to offer support and to share some of the weight when they know what's going on or they understand what you're going through. Whereas not sharing what's going on might result in negative feedback like complaints from your coworkers or, you know, just assumptions from other people in your life because you're not telling them what's going on. They might just assume that you're feeling a certain way about them or that you're just in a bad mood. So communication really gets everybody on the same page. Next up is to sleep more, especially in those times of feeling depleted. Getting more sleep is gonna keep you from getting to that point of burnout altogether. Sleep is just very important. It helps so many different areas of your life, but especially when you're talking about energy and energy 
energy depletion. That might mean stopping one episode earlier at nighttime or not doing your bedtime reading, you know, or taking extra time on a Saturday to take a nap and making sure you don't have your schedule jam packed. Just getting that sleep can also help with impulses. So things like impulse shopping or eating a tub of ice cream. We're a lot weaker when we're not well rested. So if you're wanting to maintain your progress, you know, the progress in your home, the progress in your physical fitness or whatever it is that you've been working on, controlling those impulses is gonna be huge and you're more equipped to do that when you're well rested. You don't have to spend all of your downtime just sleeping and being lazy though. You can use that time to fulfill yourself in other ways. That can also be replenishing and that brings me to today's sponsor, which is Skillshare. It took me a long time to find the path that I'm on now. Years of learning and piecemealing things together on my own. Being a YouTuber was never actually something that I planned on doing. It came to be through creative learning and through exploring. But the thing is, you don't always need to have some $2,000 program just to get you to the next level. Sometimes you just need to learn some key skills or hone skills that you're already developing. And Skillshare is a great platform that's full of experts who are sharing just those kinds of skills from real professionals. Just this week, I was learning about vlogging for business from YouTuber Aaron Winters. I learned everything from finding and planning and notion to shooting and editing a vlog, and I learned it all in just over an hour. So where could you use some growth? The first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Reject guilt and negativity. I added these last several on here, definitely out of personal experience because whenever you take downtime, it can make you feel guilty, especially for somebody who's used to being super productive and getting things done. And you know maybe that other people on your team or other people in your family are still working. There can be a lot of guilt, unfortunately, with taking that time for yourself. That's why I recommend planning your downtime as much as possible so that you know that you have all your ducks in a row and that that's what you're scheduled to do is to rest so you don't have to feel so guilty about it. But keep in mind that guilt is a passive emotion. It doesn't solve anything. And actually on the contrary, it can just make you feel more drained. It can drain what little bit of energy you have left. So when that guilt tries to settle in and weigh heavy on your mind and your body, just try to let it slide right off and remind yourself that you've experienced times of energy depletion before, you've experienced times of downtime, and you always come out of it. It's going to be fine. So instead of sinking into that guilt, try to think of ways that you're gonna keep everything afloat while you're taking this downtime, which, spoiler, is the next step, which is to create a bare bones to-do list. When our energy is depleted, our productivity really diminishes, but there are still some things that need to get done. You still have like the basic things that need to function on some level every day. So this is where we're gonna cater a little bit to our drain state. Every night before bed, just write down like two to three things, if there are two to three things that are the bare bones to-do list that you absolutely have to do the next day. These are the things that cannot wait and will cause your business or your life to really suffer if they're not done. I personally recommend following that up with alarms and reminders so that you're not having to expend extra energy just in remembering to do the bare bones list of things that you need to do. And again, I highly recommend doing them the night before because if you wait until you wake up that morning, there's a good chance you'll have forgotten and it'll just be extra stressful. And we're trying to diminish that stress. It'll just make your life a lot easier if you can wake up on autopilot with your alarms in place and only the absolute things that you need to get done already on the list. So next up on the list is delegating and outsourcing, which to me is kind of like a way of automating. As long as you have somebody else, whether that is a machine or another person who's already in place to take care of the things that you need to take care of, you're able to take it off of your plate. It's automated. It's just going to happen and you don't have to forefront that energy in order to make it happen. And having as many of those systems in place as possible, just in your general life, is going to keep you from feeling depleted, but it's it's definitely gonna support you when you do feel depleted. So of those things that are on your bare bones to-do list, which ones could be outsourced or automated? Maybe your spouse can take the kids to school, or maybe you hire a VA or some kind of business assistant to help you while you're taking your downtime. And last up, again from experience, is to set a hard deadline for the end of your downtime. This helps to alleviate a lot of the guilt and a lot of, you know, worrying how other people are gonna respond when you're able to say, I will be done with my downtime on this date 
kind of like when I took my maternity leave. I was able to disconnect because I had all of the pieces in place. I had delegated, I had outsourced, I had set a deadline for myself to come back. I knew that it wasn't just gonna be an ongoing new state of change, right? Like there was a deadline for it. And that made it easier for me to fully disconnect during that time. And that's always gonna be the case. When you have a deadline, you're able to commit to your rest. You're able to really sink into it and enjoy it. And it's not going to become a new habit that just perpetuates and goes on forever, which is the other side of the coin. You don't want to lose all of your progress and quit all of your goals, but if you just let this low energy and this depletion take over and become your new normal, a new perpetual state for you, that's exactly what's gonna happen. And this is very important, when that deadline does arrive, don't wait for motivation or inspiration to kick back into gear. At that point, you wanna fully rely on activation get up and move your body. You know, even if you have to go through the actions until you get back in the flow, do what you have to do, move. You know, a lot of times things feel like they're gonna be a lot more difficult than they actually are when you get up and move around and that adrenaline starts pumping and you get the momentum. Our energy is limited. It doesn't last forever. But it's important to remember that energy depletion doesn't last forever either. So knowing that it does happen, but that it doesn't last forever, you can plan around it and you can make yourself the most successful energy drained person out there. Be sure to grab your free downtime planner down in the description and I will chat with you next week. Bye.